I'm giving you my class time, I'm putting it in the 60% category. Now, the worksheet Dylan's been working on is technically not due until Friday, but it would be so smart of Dylan to go ahead and have it done before that quiz happens. My gosh, why wouldn't you practice something before you get quizzed on it? Um, next Wednesday, the circle color page is due. If you weren't here yesterday, you want to see me when I get done with the notes. I think it's in the Tuesday or whatever yesterday was, but just so you know what I want. Uh, there's something else. The circle puzzle is not there until next Monday. I posted a vocab thing to help you with that. I believe that's about all the words I want to say. Let's just keep going. Um, I wanted to skip Wednesday's Bellinger, mostly because I had written all over that. And I wanted to go to the Thursday one. It's been on the screen, baby. Um... If you didn't, I mean, it's good math. I'm just there. I know I need to distribute that 5.3. I don't know what 5.3 times 5 is. Okay. Natalie, get it together. Okay, I distribute that 3, and I would get 3 plus, I don't know what 3 times 3.5 is. 10.5. Okay, I need to solve for B. The first thing I could do is combine those like terms. So 3 and 2.8. Perfect. Now, what do you want to do next? That's what I would have done too. Can you solve it differently? Of course. So we have negative 26.5 equals 0 0.02 plus something. It's okay that I'm about to write on the Friday bell ring here because as you recall, that's the third thing. As you recall, there's a notebook test on Friday anyway, so it's fine that we're writing all over the Friday one. And you end up getting what? Isn't it negative? Okay. And then what do I do? Uh, so it equals what? Uh, I'm just going to put 5.1. Uh, thank you for actually telling me the full decimal. No, everyone else has told me 5.1 all day. Um, I know that's about right because 5 times 5 is 25 and it's a little bigger. So, um, 
I don't know why this has been happening, but again, that second bell ringer is way easier than that first bell ringer. So I'll give you a second to finish. I'll try to leave both on the screen. Maybe I'll swap colors. For the second bell ringer, I'm going to fly. By combined like terms, I would have 10W plus 6 equals 7W minus 21. If I subtract the 6, I would have 10W equals 7W minus 27. If I subtract the 7W, I would have 3W equals negative 27. I divide by 3. And I get W equals negative 9. That one's a little easier. <coughs> okay. Now for the notes. I believe I've hole punched them backwards again. I'm not sure. No, I haven't. Uh, the one that has the pie chart, that's going to be what we do last. So the pie chart should be on the back. This is the front side. No. No. Don't ask me that when I'm YouTube recording. Yeah, yeah, it's like Don't ask me this while I'm gonna like incriminate me and my peers. So next Ms. Compton is a mathematician. I think I'm a mathematician. <laughs> That's my answer. Okay. Um there are some new vocab terms we're going to need to learn today. We've been talking about stuff inside the circle, like the diameter, a chord, a radius. Today we're going to focus on the outside, that perimeter. Uh, we're going to call the first, well, I say that, and then our first thing is actually on the inside. A central angle. Its vertex is in the center, and whose sides are two radiuses. Bless you. So I've colored in a central angle, but if you look at that tiny example circle to the right, the diagram has three different central angles. When you add all three central angles together, we know circles always add to 360 degrees. That's right. <coughs> it's not surprising. So for our first thing today, we need to do, we need to solve that first one for x. Does anyone know what degrees I should put? For that first example. Uh, it's really close. You just guessed too. That's really close. <laughs> yeah, the square's 90. I, I get that. But what is the missing base? 90 plus It is 140. Now, I do it a little differently than she does. I would have said 360, and then I would have subtracted off each other central angle. So it's 360 minus 130. Well, that would have been 230. 230 minus 90. That would have been 140. We know all three numbers add to 360, so if you're solving it different than me like Caitlin did, that's fine. But that's how I would have done it in my head. <coughs> okay. Take a second and see if you can figure out the second one. Oh, okay. So on the next one, we do 360 minus that. Uh-huh. Minus, minus the other two. Yep. And you'll figure out the missing number. It is 50. Okay. So if you do 360 minus 165, you would get, I don't know what that is. 195. And then if you did 195 minus 145, you would get to the 50. That's awesome. Now we get to the last one. It is 145. That was super fast. Um, I would have done 360 minus 40. That puts me at 320. Minus 90. 320 minus 90. Oh, 230. 230. 230 minus 85. I'm at 145. Now what... I, what Will is doing works just as well. He added 85 plus 40 plus 90. Got that number. 360 minus that number. Doesn't matter as long as they all add to 360. I don't care how you do it. <coughs> so the first example is all about the 360. And that central angle. 
now I'm not lying. We're actually going to get to the outside part of the circle. So this is where those colors would potentially come into play. Um, we're going to talk about goodbye, dear. It's called an arc, like with a, with a C, not a K. So it's defined by two endpoints. And it separates the central. Uh, good, anyway, I'm not going to read to you. Okay, so this is an arc. Now, it's funnily enough, me and Ms. Brewster were just discussing arcs a second ago, and here's why. So what the first thing we're going to do is find the measure of the angle that arc makes. And it happens to match that central angle. Okay, so let me highlight that arc. Our next arc is ADB, so ADB. Let me highlight it. It said right here, A, D, B. So I went in that order, A to D, D to B. And then on this last one, it again says A, D, B. So I go A to D, D to B. And follow that specific order. And then I have some weird things highlighted, and we need to talk about those three different pink things on the screen. Okay, the smallest one, the top one, would be called a minor arc. So from A to B, that's called a minor arc. I think of it as the small arc. The second example, the really big one, of course, it's called a major arc. Notice it's really big. It's a big arc. <clears throat> and then a semicircle, it's rather intuitive. Half a circle. We colored half the circle in. Semicircle makes perfect sense. Um, in case you forget, because we're about to start labeling things, we're going to say, is this a major, is this a minor, is it a semicircle? So what I think of, because circles remind me of food, let's be honest. So I think of pizza. So a uh, minor arc is if, if Miss Brewster eats less than four slices. And I'm thinking of a normal eight slice pizza. So if she eats less than four slices, she's eating a minor arc of our pizza. Actually, if she just ate the crust. Okay, if Miss Brewster eats more than four, she's eating that major arc's gone. I don't know if she can do it. And if she eats exactly half that pizza, so exactly four slices, she's a semicircle. So when we start highlighting stuff on the next example, I think through pizza slices. How many pizza slices have I highlighted? If it's a bunch, it's a major arc. If it's not that many, it's a minor arc. It has to be more than 180 degrees to be a major. Okay, and now, of course, i got to relate it back to math. So that central angle matches the arc. So if my central angle is 30, my arc measures 30. If my little angle on the inside that we just practiced is 30, then the arc is 30 as well, the measure of the arc. Okay, and then, so if this is 30, and we're still in circle world, and it still adds up to 360, then that rest, that Pac-Man shape, would be 360 minus 30, which is 330. That makes sense. And then if you're really trying to annoy me, because I know I put this on the quiz tomorrow, if it's a semicircle, if you don't put 180 degrees, you think you've seen red on your paper? My I'm goodness. Put 180.0. That I won't get mad at. It's people who write the word semicircle and don't immediately put 180 that get on my nerves. This one? Yeah. Okay, the inside angle matches that. So if this is 30, that's 30. How do we know it was 30 though? I made it up. Oh, okay. And then on this one, since the inside one of that tiny one's 30, and we know it adds up to 360, 360 minus 30. Okay, so our next example, they want to we've got to label it major, minor, semicircle. And we've got to find its measure. So the first one they want is GH. So is it major or minor or a semicircle? Uh, 
How many slices of pizza? How many slices of pizza? It's a minor. We did not eat half a pizza or more. It's a minor arc. What number should I put as the measure? 122. It tells us that central angle is 122, so therefore this arc is going to be 122. We didn't even have to solve. Are there any questions on 2A? This, the inside angle is 122, the central angle. Therefore, the arc is also 122. And now the next one asked for GLH. So we got to go special order. So G to L, then L to H. Well, that's everything else. And that's really big, so it's a major. And then I need to know how many degrees. How many? It is. So you do, um, I would do, can you see the orange and the pink? I would do, we get the orange plus pink, make the full circle. So I would do 360 minus the pink to figure out the orange. 238, you said? Yes. But if you're trying to complicate your life, you could just solve the two semicircles. So that one's 180. Solve that missing one, it would add up to 238 as well. Okay, are there any questions on example two? Then we're going to do the exact same thing on example three, but there's a, maybe a, hopefully a little more required. We'll see. On example three, they want to know the measure of arc MQ first. M to Q. M to Q? That's a minor. It is a minor. And I need a number. Um, Why? It was whoever said 65 over there was correct. And then Caitlin, you got solved it too. So it's going to be 180 minus 115, which is 65. Why is it? Why am I doing that? Because I see a semicircle. I see half a circle. So I did 180 minus 115, and I got 65. That would be the easiest way for that one. Okay, in the next example, it says M, N, P. If I color M, N, P, haven't I shaded half the circle? So I'm going to write 180, and I'm also going to write the word semicircle. And last but not least, it says MNQ, and I'm going to use my annoying yellow for that. MNQ, and since I've colored so much, I'm going to color the whole thing in. M to N, all the way to Q. Is it, it does look like a Pac-Man. Any major art looks like a Pac-Man. Uh, I said that on answer. So anytime it looks like a Pac-Man, Brianna, I meant to say that word earlier. Anytime it looks like a Pac-Man, it's a major. Uh, and then what did you want to do, Dylan? You can do that. So Dylan's solving. He said, I can solve that semicircle, and then I can add up that yellow bit, that yellow bit, that yellow bit, get the answer. He's right. He'll get the right answer. There's an easier way. Does someone know an easier way? Yeah. So if we take that major and subtract out the pieces that, that Pac-Man's eating, so subtract out the 65, and you can't read that, so 360 minus 65, that would be easier than what Dylan's doing, although he's still going to write the answer. 285, you both said? 295. I can't hear. Okay. So it's 295. Now, Dylan would still get the same number as me. Would you He's just doing a couple more steps. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. It is degrees. That's a good point. Thank you, ma'am. I know. Rookie mistake. Okay, are there any questions on these major, minor arcs, central angles? I think so, too. I really like circles. I really hate that we saved until the end because that's where you could love them, too.
Will you flip it to the back? <laughs> okay, use your context, please. Plus, you've been with me for a long time. What's the first blank supposed to be? It is not Compton. Thanks, sir. <laughs> yeah, as always, our favorite vocab term in geometry is Connecticut, let me tell you. Congruent arcs. <laughs> Congruent arcs, they either are in the same circle or they're in congruent circles. And of course, if they're congruent, then they have the same measure. Okay, so our next example is probably our most important for the day if you're thinking through like your life overall. Uh, this would be the most ACT relatable. I bet there's a pie chart you have to interpret on the ACT, either in the math or the science portion. If it's in the math portion, more than likely they're going to give you two different regions, like softball and volleyball, or volleyball and other. They're going to make you do more than what we're going to do, like one more step, just because this is going to be a little, little too easy. Okay, so it starts off with CD. They don't know the measure of arc CD. Okay, why is my answer not 18? Because it's not. 18. 18 is a, a percents are out of 100, not 60. But that's the best. Dylan, when we get done with this, remind me of that. That's the best answer I've heard all day. So I know from yesterday I forgot. Um, that's one issue. I had to point that out second period when I thought of it. I didn't even think about it first period. So we know percentages on a pie chart are going to add up to 100. But we're supposed to add up to 360 if we're a circle. So there's one issue with assuming the answer is 18. Um, so what should we do? We've somehow got to go. We've somehow got to use that 18 and our 360 and get an answer. So I want to multiply. Do I multiply 18 times 360? No, you multiply 0.18. You do. So I'm going to need 0.18 times 360 because I want to know what 18% of 360 is. So I want to know what 18% of 360 is. I need that number, please. 64.8. So our arc is actually 64.8 degrees long. You wanted, um, I thought she did 64.8. Yeah, I'm just going to stop there. 64.8 is fine, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, then that's good. That's perfect. Okay, so on our next one, it says BC. I see BC is 18%. I was about to start doing some work, but I don't have to, do I? What's the answer? Yes, because they're congruent arcs. Okay, and then we get to our next one. It says EF, and it sure is hard to read. I believe it says 14%. So I need to do 0.14 times 360. Thank you, ma'am. I need to write over that because that is hard to read. There you go. Can we just select none? I don't know a person Okay, and then we get to the last one, and it says it wants the measure of FA. But FA is also 14%. So again, I get to use that 50.4 because those two match. I don't what? But it was under the section called congruent art, so it was intentional. That's true. It wouldn't be no fun at all. Okay, next blank. What A letter word should I use? That is true. So if two arcs are beside each other, they're called adjacent. Adjacent arcs have exactly one point in common. So if you can see on this screen, my pink and my orange arcs, they have that one point in common because they're adjacent. That makes sense. Um, this one is the most complicated one we've done yet. We're going to skip around on it a bit. Let's start with letter D. They want us to find the measure of A, E, C. What is the measure of A, E, C? 
It's half a circle. It's half a circle. A E C. Why? A E C is a semicircle. So it's 180 on the nose. Okay. And now that we've done that one, I want to back up to the first one. They asked for A E D. A E D. What number should I put? Because she did 90 plus 63, because this piece was 63, this piece was 90. 90 plus 63 is 153. And now we get to the complicated ones. So the first complicated one is CE. The second complicated one, which I probably want to do first, is ADB. Let's do that one first. Uh, letter B. A, D, all the way to B. A, D, B. Well, it would probably help if we put some numbers in on those missing pieces. If we can fill in those missing pieces, then B and C should be easy to calculate. We need some numbers. Does anyone know? There's a 90. And there's a 63. Yes. Okay, so first, Caitlin came up with that number. Here's how she saw a semicircle. Um, my finger's in the way. 180 minus 63 was 117. So she saw a semicircle. That was great. One piece down, two more to go. You're making it too complicated, but yeah. Okay, so how I would solve it, how I did it. So it's a 63, a 117, and a 27. No. Oh, you're trying to give me answers to things. Let me think my life through first. Okay, what I was going to say, how we're coming up with these numbers is we're solving more semicircles. So you saw how we solved that semicircle. The next semicircle I would solve is this one. 117 plus 63, that is 180, another semicircle. And then you could easily find that third piece. Now there was someone, because we could say this is another semicircle. I know that's 63, I know that's 90. 180 minus 90 minus 63 is how I came up with that 27. So I just kept solving the semicircles. That's my suggestion. There is one more suggestion that I would have, and it would make me especially proud considering your final exam is inevitable doom and end is coming. Does someone know something else geometric as to why I knew to put the numbers where I put them? The 63 was here, a 63 goes here because vertical angles, as always, are congruent. So she's correct. Now, is it always going to measure the exact same? No, but they do on this one. So vertical angles are congruent is an argument I could use. Okay, now back to what Juliana was wanting to do because she was wanting to finish answering the questions. So C to E would be 27 plus 90. Because C to E, 27 plus 90, I need to know that. No is that 117? Yeah. Not surprising. And then ADB, which is the pink thing we highlighted, what would be the easiest way to figure that out? That's what I would do. So Juliana would do, again, I'm with Brianna and I'm on the Pac-Man. I see that we have this. Why don't I do 360 minus the piece Pac-Man's missing? And that would be the easiest way. But what Kaylee's going to do of adding, which is what Dylan was trying to do earlier, if you add the 63, the 27, the 90, and the 63, you'll still get the right answer. Okay, what number am I supposed to put? Okay. 
That's what she was doing. I didn't say it like that. She did. Kaylee's actually doing semicircle plus the 63. And that would work too, but I see Pat Mans, like Brianna, so I'm doing Pat Mans. Okay, uh, we have one left to do. Two left to do. That's a lie. That's a lie. Where have we seen a formula like this before? You are annoying me. Why are you packing up? This does look like a sector formula. It says it is for art link. L is for art link. Oh, it's you. I know why. Okay, never mind. That was a dumb question. Art link. The X is for... It was for degrees. We're going to say degrees of the central angle. You will be given this formula, although, uh, let's face it, it is very similar to one we've seen before. So we've got a formula, L equals X over 360 times 2 pi R. Watch that I plug in for the X. Watch that I plug in for the R. Okay, you type it in your calculator and you get... Yes, dear. 75, the central angle, for the radius. What do you get? <laughs> you can come in and sit down. It would be less weird then. Yes, it is a long day. Here we are. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, so let's talk about what we've been doing so far. When we were figuring out the measure of the art length angle, that was like finding the whole <coughs> shebang. When we just find the length of the arc, it's like just finding, to me, arc length is like the length of the crest. So don't be surprised if you get small numbers like 5.2, because if I took Miss Brister's said pizza and actually measured the crest, it wouldn't be that long. Okay, we can skip both the next two if you'll humor me. What's special about the third example here? It's got a diameter, so you have to do the radius, which is... Okay, cool. I'm good. Somewhat.